here in Seal City. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome, fans, to our fantasy football. I am your host, Jim Sella, in studio with J Dash and JK47. My fantasy teams are one's five and four, and one is four and five. So I don't know if you want to take any advice from me. So we're going to go with all Dash's advice this week. You will just have to listen to me talk and suffer. Please believe. Hey, one of the greatest things so far, though, is Yahoo finally changed Ty Montgomery to a running back. So now I can play him at the running back spot. Very Ball. nice. That helps. Because Charcantric West is garbage. Yeah, and what do you have last Rogers week? Nine third. points. Yeah, I don't even think he had that. Well, Spencer Ware should be back this week anyway. Yeah. I, I got Deion Lewis waiting in the wings, but I'm waiting until he blows up first. I might play him this week. If they say he's start, man, I might go with him. I'm not sure yet. But my team, there's a couple guys I don't want to play in the flex spots, and I'm, I'm still debating. But let's start off with, with our situational starters here. Through 24 players picked, non-quarterbacks, that is, we're averaging 15.75 points per player, so not bad. And quarterbacks through three quarterbacks picked were averaging 24 points per player. And we are taking a quarterback this week. But we are going to start off with you, Jim, and you are going a running back. Yeah, I'm going to take Darren Sproles going up against Atlanta. Atlanta gives up the six most fantasy points to running backs. Sproles is easy's boy, and easy's not here, so i got to represent for him. That little dude, he ran all over the Steelers. Maybe not running, he actually caught the ball and then run. But he's like an ageless wonder in the NFL. He is probably, and I, I'm not saying he's on the same level because nobody is, but he is probably as close to Barry Sanders as I've seen since Barry Sanders retired. Because that little dude just bobs and weaves and, and makes it through everybody. I'd either say Ladanian Tomlinson or Le'Veon Bell. I think Ladanian Tom. I think Ladanian and Bell both run with a little bit of power, more power than Sproul. Oh yeah, definitely, but. Barry Sanders was in another league of his own, obviously. Oh, believe it. I'm just saying kind of like style, not necessarily, you know what I mean, on the right. same uh, talent level. But, yeah, Darren Sproles going up against Atlanta. They're not a very good defense, and he should be able to beat him in the passing game like you were saying. But he's actually now considered the lead back in Philly, and he's actually had back-to-back -back games with double-digit carries for the first time all season over the past two games played. And he has double-digit fantasy points in four of his last six games. He, he should be able to get it done on the ground as well versus Atlanta. They really don't stop running backs that well, obviously, on the ground or in the passing game. So I think Darren Sproles is going to have a big week. Do you think Philly feels stupid for signing DeMarco Murray, then trading him, and also signing Ryan Matthews and then benching him? I mean, they look stupid. I don't care if they feel <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Who were you going with at 47? I'm going to go with Carson Palmer. You know, on our pick segment, we almost all of us pretty much picked Arizona to go yeah, pretty much big on them. So, either which way, I like Palmer in this matchup. San Francisco sucks. They're garbage. They're on the road. He's going to be a little bit healthier coming off the bye. The receivers, a little bit healthier coming off the bye. David Johnson is going to make his way through that in front seven. And he can do it in the passing game as well. So, um, I, to me, this is a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean, Carson Palmer shouldn't even be in a situational starter spot right now. He should be a starter every week, but he just hasn't been that great. He only has three multi-TD games this season, and his second three-TD game of the year came last week. It was his first since week two, but he has 705 yards passing over his last two games. Like you said, coming out of the bye, I think Palmer's going to take a step forward here and get Arizona back on track. I still think they're a playoff caliber team. Uh, if you look back, they already played San Francisco once, but that was when Carson, that was the only game Carson Palmer missed the full game this season. I believe it was the only one he missed, but yeah, he, he didn't even play in that game. They still won 33 to 21. So I think Palmer, if he, if he can do what he did last week, he should be able to do it big against San Fran because their defense is not good. I'm going to go with Tyrell Williams from San Diego going up against Miami. It's a home game for San Diego. Miami lets up the 10th most fantasy points to wide receivers this season. Last week, he had 65 yards and a touchdown with six catches against Tennessee. He has double digits in fantasy in five of his last eight games. 
he he's only scored less than nine points twice this season as well. And both of those games were against Denver, one of the best defenses in football. Miami doesn't even compare to Denver. Ian, Tyrell Williams has been one of the main, if not the main target for Phillip Rivers out there with Travis Benjamin battling a little bit of injuries. He's had six or more targets in six of his last seven games. And Travis Benjamin may not even play this week. So it could be a ton of targets for Tyrell Williams against Miami. Especially with Antonio Gates being a little bit banged up again, too. And Hunter Henry's banged up. So, yes, Tyrell Williams is, I mean, almost has to be the, targeted 10, 15 times in this game if they're going to be passing the ball. All right, let's move on to our sleepers. Jim, what are you going with? I'm going to pick up my boy, Kenny Britt. He's going up against the New York Jets. Revis Island has definitely turned into Revis Sandbox. Dude's getting torched all year long. Britt's really come into his, I don't want to say come into his own, but he's found himself a little bit this season. Uh, Earlier in the year, I think he had the best game of his career, or at least the most yards in his career a couple weeks ago. Well, they're actually saying right now he's having his best year of his career. Yeah, he's a big guy. He can get downfield. Now, the only thing that worries me about Kenny Britt is can Case Keenum get to do the football? Yeah, that's a problem. I mean, Case Keenum, he had a couple good games this season, but really he's had a lot of bad games as well. But the only He's way... had a lot of bad ones in his career. Yeah, he's not very good. But look, the New York Jets can stop the run, so they should be able to li- limit Todd Gurley in his game. So I, I think Kenny Brick can have a good game because the Jets really, like you said, Revis is their best cornerback, and he's not that great anymore either. So they, they can be beat in a passing game, and Britt has been pretty consistent this year. He has double digits in fantasy in six of eight games. He scored three TDs over his last three games as well, so he's finding the end zone right now as well. Dude's beast. What are you saying? I'm going to go with his teammate wide receiver Tavon Austin inconsistent as you get as a football player, but I'll tell you what, whenever he gets himself going, boy, does he do it. Yeah, that's the one thing about him. He's he's either going to blow up or he's going to do nothing. And he's alternated good games with bad games this season since week three. Well, you got to look at Case Keenum, too. I think he's going to try to get rid of the football early. I mean, they have to pass so, if they want to win this game. If that happens, I mean, I actually might even take Austin over Britt in the Yeah, Britt's been more home. consistent, but Austin can really blow up. The but, Jets' DBs don't tackle very well, and Tavon Austin's good with the ball in his hands, so he might even be able to get an end around, you know, long run or a, even a punt return or a kick return if, if uh, L.A. still has him doing that. And like I mentioned, he's been alternating good games with bad games all season long. He had one catch last week. The game prior to that, 10 catches for 57 yards and a touchdown with 15 targets against the New York Giants. So... Good game, bad game, good game, bad game. He had a bad game last. He's going to come up with a good game this week. I'm going to go with a guy we talked about in our line segment when we were talking about the Houston Texans, and that is their tight end, C.J. Fedorovich, going up against Jacksonville in Jacksonville, who actually has been pretty decent against tight ends this season, letting up the seventh fewest points to fantasy tight ends. But Fedorovich has been a focal point in this offense since Bill O'Brien took over the play calling for the offense. He's had at least seven targets in each of his last four games, double-digit fantasy points in four of his last five games. That is PPR. And he has three TDs in that span as well. So DeAndre Hopkins not having the season people thought he was going to have. I mean, last year he was one of the most targeted players in all of football. I think it has a lot to do with Brock Osweiler, obviously. I mean, I don't think they, I think they should have brought Bobby Hoyer back to tell you the truth. But yeah, Hopkins not doing what he should. Like 47 mentioned, Will Fuller had a big start to the season and fell off. Fedorovich is maybe their best player to get the ball to out there right now because even Lamar Miller in the backfield hasn't been good this season. Oh yeah, wait, real quick. I forgot to mention, our sleepers are averaging 13.22 13.22 points per player. That's 23 players picked. Our deep sleepers are averaging 12.16 per player, and that is through 25 players picked. And we also picked three quarterbacks, and we average 13.67 points per quarterback, although we did have two good picks and one terrible pick early in the season. All right, go with your deep sleeper, man. 
I'm going to go with CJ Pro Size for the Seattle Seahawks. They're going up against New England. New England gives up the 16th most points to fantasy running backs. He's really just, I guess, right now the the back and passing downs. But that offense has transitioned from the hard nosed Marshawn Lynch running it, uh, you know, 30 times a game, and Russell Wilson throwing it 20 times to Russell Wilson throwing the ball 40 times, and then them probably only running it about 20. Uh, Christian Michael struggled a little bit. I, Pro size could actually come in and take his job all the way. But as of right now, he's going to put up a lot of points in the passing game on third down. And I think he can get out in the open and make some plays against that New England defense. They're going to play their safeties back to avoid giving up the big play, which means you're going to be able to get a lot of underneath stuff. So a lot of catch and run for pro size. PPR, baby. Yeah, they were fed up with C.J. Spiller. Like you said, they're starting to move towards a pass-heavy offense instead of run-heavy. And pro size is the guy you want in the passing game out there if you're going to have a running back in the passing game. Pete Carroll said this week he, that pro size is going to play a ton in this game. So he may get uh, uh, a lot more snaps than Christian Michael does this week. How about you, 47? All right, my sleeper is going to be Adam Humphreys, uh, wide receiver from Tampa Bay. Evans banged up. Vincent Jackson gone. Yeah. As Austin Safari and Jenkins, non factor. Well he's uh, they actually cut him earlier this no, season. They? Yeah. He's beat. Yeah, he's with, with the Jets now. The Jets, huh? Yeah. Like you said, forty seven. Everybody on that team's hurt. What they have out there right now is Adam Humphreys and Cameron Brait. I don't mind playing Braid either. I think he's a good tight end to play this week. But Adam Humphreys should be targeted a ton. Last week against Atlanta, who's also one of the worst uh, defenses against wide receivers in fantasy. He had five catches, 46 yards, and a touchdown. That was with Mike Evans playing, too. Now, he may miss the game with a concussion, like you were saying. Bright might actually be the number one target this week. But I would lean towards Adam Humphreys over Bright just because Chicago is right now the worst in the league against fantasy wide receivers, while they actually stopped the tight end pretty well. So Humphreys should have a big week because you look, Jameis Winston Eight touchdowns in his last three games. Dude's balling. I told Jim to play him last week in fantasy. How'd that work out, Jim? About 24 points. Not bad. I won. That's all that matters. That is all that matters. I want to take this moment to say I'm going to destroy Eddie B in fantasy this week, Uh by the way. I am projected to win 119 to 97. You're going down, Eddie. (laughs) Well, he must have some buys going on or something in his lineup still, right? Yeah, he, I don't think his lineup's set because he has David Johnson on the bench right now. Yeah. So he'll fix that and he'll beat you. All right. You I'm going to. Listen, my team's good and we're going to go over my team when I, once you're done giving your deep sleeper here. All right. I'm going to go with a quarterback, Trevor Simeon from Denver, going into New Orleans. This is probably the only matchup I would play him because New Orleans are going to be putting up a ton of points, I think. They put up a lot of points at home this season, and I think that's going to t- continue, even though Denver has a good defense. We've seen Oakland put up those points against them last week. New Orleans, they let up the 10th most fantasy points to quarterbacks this season, and if you look, Simeon had 283 yards, two touchdowns, and one pick last week at Oakland. It was his second highest fantasy total of the season. And just his second multi-TD game of the season. But he's been throwing the ball a lot. 37 pass attempts or more in three of his last four games. So I think Trevor Simeon's going to go out there. If you really need a quarterback this week, you don't have much to choose from. I think Simeon can go out there and put up 20 points for you. Dude's garbage. Oh, he is. But I think (laughs) it's okay. I mean, look, Joe Flacco's garbage. We took him twice in our fantasy segment this year, and it was his, pretty much his only two good games. Believe it. But that's it. Okay, what's up your, with your fantasy lineup? All right, at quarterback, I got Aaron Rodgers. He's going to be my starter no matter what. Okay. But then I have some choices. I got Terrell Pryor, Larry Fitzgerald, Cole Beasley, Tyrell Williams, all for wide receiver. So I got to figure out who I want to play there. I think... I think I'd have to go Williams and Pryor's been balling all year. Yeah, Pryor's a guy that you almost got to play now. He's an 
uh, starter every week, I think. And Larry Fitzgerald, we already talked about Carson Palmer. He's going to have a big week. Hopefully Larry's a little bit healthier coming out of the bye. So I'm playing him, but it's between Tyrell Williams and Cole Beasley. I think I agree with 47. Tyrell Williams should have a big game this week with Travis Benjamin not playing. Most likely. Travis Benjamin still has a chance to play, but I still think Tyrell Williams will be the main target out there for Phillip Rivers going up against the defense that really doesn't stop wide receivers. Now, the biggest question, Mark, I really have is I have Devontae Booker and Todd Gurley at my two running back slots. But then on my two flex players, I have Matt Forte and Jordan Reed. So do I play Beasley or Williams over Forte or Reed? Uh, Maybe Forte, but not Reed. No, I'm playing Forte as well, man. Actually, who... Let me think real quick. Who's Denver playing? New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah, Booker's a good play, too. I, I'd almost think about sitting Todd Gurley, man, because the New York Jets can stop the run, and they're going to have to pass this week, and he really doesn't get too involved in the passing game. So what do you think? Move Forte to running back, sit Gurley, and play either Beasley or Williams? Yeah, well, we're, I would be playing Williams, I think. How many of those wide receivers you were talking about did you want to start, two of the four or three of the four? I, I mean, I can start any of them. I have Larry and Pryor as my starters right now with Beasley and Williams on the bench. But I have Gurley, Booker, Forte as my three running backs, Eifert at my tight end, and Jordan Reed as my additional flex. And Washington is playing who? Minnesota. Hmm. Ooh. I might sit Jordan Reed this week, just this week, and play Beasley over him. And really, maybe Tyler Williams over Gurley as well. Has Gurley put up anything for you recently? Like, anything huge? Not really. I mean, he, he only has 98 fantasy points on the year. Yeah, I might sit. I mean, it sounds crazy, but I might sit Jordan Reed and Todd Gurley. Yahoo has Gurley as a low-end number two. Yeah. Mm, brutal. I think that's I got the way Hunter Henry going. and McCoy, too, but they don't need to be playing. McCoy's on a bye. Jacquez Rogers needs to get healthy, too. Yeah, I picked up Doug Martin. Hopefully, he comes back healthy. But Eddie B's got a good squad. He's got right now in his starting lineup, which he hasn't set yet. It's Breeze, Brandon Marshall, Devontae Parker, Darren Sproles, Hightower, Fleener, Moncrief, Montgomery, and L.A.'s defense. But he has Jordy Nelson on his bench. He has Crabtree, but he's out of bye. He's got Matt Jones. And he's got David Johnson from Arizona. He also has Andy Dalton and Jesse James, but I don't really see those two getting in. But he could throw David Johnson in there, and that would really put a cramp in my style. Yeah, Jordy Nelson got to go in there, too. I'd take uh, probably Hightower out, and I can't remember the, the receivers you said. Who were the receivers he has in his lineup? Brandon Marshall and Devontae Parker. Yeah, I might sit Parker as well. It's going to be a tough matchup. Eddie, you're going down full. I need this win. Anybody else you want to talk about? Nope, that's it. Oh, uh, what's his name? Percy Harvin. Any fantasy value yet? No. Ladarius Green expected to play this week for Pittsburgh. Any fantasy value yet? Yeah, there's a sleeper sleeper pick right there. No problem with that. I'm, I think he's already above deep sleeper. Ladarius Green's a pretty good tight end. Now, who knows how much he's going to play in this game, but if you're looking for a tight end, there ain't much out there. Fedorova should be out there. You should pick him up. Cameron Brate's another one, but Ladarius Green, yeah, no problem with him as a sleeper this week either, especially with Pittsburgh at home. Ben should be a little bit better this week. Maybe even stash him on your bench for a week or two if you know your tight end's going to have a bye in a couple weeks. Yeah, my t I mean, I have Julius Thomas, man. He blows. I picked up C.J. Fedorovich this week to play him over Julius Thomas. And Listen, if Thomas has a bad week, I might go for Ladarius Green if he's still out there. In one league, I have Gronkowski and Eifert. In another league, I have Eifert, Jordan Reed, and Hunter Henry. Ball. Yeah, you should trade me Eifert or Jordan Reed. <laughs> I'm taking that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll, t I'll tell you who I do have in one of my leagues is Jimmy Graham he's been killing it lately oh did you see Jimmy Graham play last week man he played good oh he had two one-handed touchdown receptions and he jumped over dude running down the field like uh, hopped him and kept going dude dude had one of the best games I've ever seen his knees starting to feel 100% again finally 
Maybe, maybe, man. I don't know. These catches he had, man. You know the Lynn Swan catch, the one they always show, the one-handed catch where he's being pass interfered with. Right. Well, I mean, it was just like that. He was being pass interfered with on both of them. They were holding his one arm back, and he just caught it one-handed for touchdowns. Kept his feet in beast mode. Dude's big time. That's it, though, man. Wrap it up. He's doing it bigly, as Donald Trump would say. Big league. Bigly. It, it, he actually says big big league, I believe, man. <laughs> I like big league. Fans, <laughs> questions, comments. Anybody wants to say go Trump, hit us up on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Hit me up on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. Keep coming back to YouTube and click and subscribe. Eddie B's going down. I'm going to win. Everybody tune in.